Hi, welcome to your video on functions that return values. We have been talking about abstraction and how we can make functions to simplify things, but so far all of the functions that you guys have seen are ones that do a very direct action on the canvas. And that's not how all functions or a lot of functions work. Some of them do complicated things behind the scenes, but instead of making something show up, they just return a value back to the program. Um, we have also talked a little bit about variable scoping and how all of those parameters in functions only live inside the functions. And like anything that happens inside the function generally just lives inside the function. Um, to get things out, we have to use this return command, which is usually how we know our function is done running because we hit that return um, area. We are going to see examples of this right now as we code together, but I also just want to show you some functions that you guys already use that return values. So please make sure that you guys have gone to the editor. Um, there is starter code for you guys in the project. Make sure you duplicate it and save so you have this in your account. Um, and make sure that your screen is set up so that you can see me and what I am coding and you can also see your own work um, so that you know what's going on. I'm going to make sure my text is nice and big so you can see everything um, and then we will get going together. So in this example, I have made a, I've linked the collide library and I've made a circle on the screen and then I used collide point circle to detect if the mouse is on top of that circle. Now, I know that for a lot of us, we are very used to using collide point circle in conditions. And we know that conditions are always looking for a Boolean statement. They're looking at something that's true or false. And the reason why we can use collide point circle and other collision detection in our Booleans is because these are actually a function that returns a value. They take in all of this information, these fill in all of the parameters for the function, and then it returns either true or false based on if the point is colliding with the circle. In this case, the point is my mouse. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit play and just show you what this looks like. Right away when I hit play, hopefully it loads for me, um, it just keeps printing false in my console forever. But if I move my mouse so it is on top of the circle, I am suddenly going to see that it starts returning true. And if I move my mouse back off the circle, it goes back to false, then back to true, then back to false. This, all this stuff in the background, somebody has already written the function for, they've already written out the definition, and they have told it that when certain things occur, it should return true. And if they're not occurring, it should return false. Um, we usually take advantage of that value, like I said, in our conditionals, but this is something that we could save to a variable. You can see we're printing it to the console. We have lots of other uses for. So I'm going to go ahead and just comment out this line. Feel free to do it as well. I'm just doing it so we don't get confused. Um, also, everything for me is showing up kind of on weird lines and spacing because I didn't hit space anywhere. Um, and it's trying to text wrap. You do not need to hit enter on your code. Um, and then I'm just going to stop it so we can write some code together. So underneath this setup and draw, you're going to see that um, you have a code along and you also have a task given to you. We are going to write our functions here and then probably test them like somewhere at the top of our code. Um, but this is where we'll write our definition. So the function that we're going to write together is a function that takes in two numbers, adds them together, and returns the sum. And I will admit, this is not a super exciting function. This isn't a super useful function because computers will just add whether we ask them to or not. We don't actually need to define a function for that. But I do think this will be like pretty simple, low stakes, like us trying to get something to work so that we can work on our syntax and just what's happening in these functions. Um, and then as we go through the rest of this unit, you guys will be building functions that are like more useful to your programs and that do more interesting things. So I'm going to break down this task one step at a time. First, you're going to notice that I have already written the name of this function and I have all the syntax set up. So I use the word function. I'm calling this function add nums. So when I test it, that's what I'm going to call. I have my empty parentheses and then I have my curly brace to stop and end the function. Now, the first thing I know needs to happen is my function needs to take in two numbers. So whenever I'm talking about a function taking something in, that means it's a parameter of that function. I am passing something from my program into that function so that it can be used inside the function. 
Um, you can think about this like like bringing things home. Like when you go to the grocery store, if you want to bring things back, you got to put them in your bag. You got to bring them through your door. They do not just magically appear. Same idea. So I know that it needs to take in two numbers. So I'm going to call this num1 and num2, and I'm just going to separate them by a comma. Now, num1 and num2 could be called anything. It could be called x, it could be called y, a, b, c, d. It doesn't really matter what I call them as long as it makes sense to me. And as long as I know that when I'm using this function, whatever number I type into the function first is going to become num1, and whatever goes in second will become num2. We're going to see an example of this when we call this function. Now inside of here, so between my curly braces that start and end my function on right now for me line 13 and 16, I am going to create a new variable called sum. This sum variable is local to add nums. So I could not use sum just in setup or in draw, um, but I'm going to create it. I'm going to give it a value of num1 plus num2, and then I am going to return sum back to the program. And I do that by just typing return and then the word sum. And you're going to see that both num1, num2, and sum are all a different color than we're used to seeing variables. That is because they are local to this function. They do not exist anywhere else, and that's the computer's way of telling us that they are being correctly used living inside our function. All right, so now that I've returned my sum, let's just test this and see what happens. So up in my, well, let's actually just do it at the very top of the program. I'm going to do this on line one. Um, I'm going to console log add nums. And inside of add nums, I need to give it two numbers. Otherwise, it's not going to run correctly. So I'm going to have it add 50 and 7 because I know this means it should add 57. So I'm then going to hit play. And I should see that I get the number 57. And I can test this a few other ways. I could add 25 and 7. I get 32. But it is correctly adding my numbers. Um, now, one thing for us to notice, right now it says add nums 25, 7. 25 is always num1. So wherever num1 is plugged in, that's the place where it's seeing 25. 7 is num2. So wherever I'm using num2, that's the number 7, which I wrote second. This is why some of the documentation is so important, which you see in the P5 reference sheet in the Collide library, because you can't just put your parameters wherever you want. There is an order that the computer is expecting in order for things to run correctly. Um, and this that's it. This was our function that returned a sum. Um, you can see the return statement is really simple. It is just the word return and then the single piece of data that we are sending back to our program. Functions generally just return one thing. Um, especially in the functions that we'll be writing. So this is part of when we are making our abstractions and making our functions, we want to keep them really, really limited in the scope of what they do. Um, it could be doing something big, wild, and crazy, but it should just be one task being completed at a time. So here's what y'all are going to be doing now. Um, for your assignment, you guys get to decide if you would like to go for a meeting or an exceeding. For a meeting, you're going to do the same thing we just did with add nums, but with making something called mult nums, which will multiply two numbers together. And the spicy version is making something that will divide two numbers. Good luck, guys.